There's something that analog video transmitters can do that digital video transmitters don't. You see, when you buy a digital video transmitter, you get however much output power the manufacturer decided to give you. 1200 milliwatts, 1200 milliwatts, one watt. That's it. And that's a problem because more output power equals more range and more penetration. But if somebody wants to make a DJI walk snail or HD zero video transmitter and they decide they're going to crank the output power up to a higher value, you can't do that because only DJI walk snail and HD zero make those video transmitters, at least as of today. But with analog video transmitters, if a manufacturer decides they want to make one that outputs 2.5 Watts, they can. And they did. This is the Foxeer Reaper VTX Extreme, and it does, in fact, output 2.5 watts. Or does it? Well, we're going to find out, and we're going to find out how it performs. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. In order to make sense out of this video transmitter, we have to ask ourselves why every manufacturer doesn't just make a 2.5 watt video transmitter or a 5 watt video transmitter or a 10 watt video or why, why don't we just crank the output power of the video transmitter to arbitrarily high values and get ridiculously long range and penetration. And the first reason that video transmitters don't go higher is regulatory. In the United States at least, the maximum output power allowed for a video transmitter that is used in telecommand of a remote control aircraft is one watt. And so all of these video transmitters coming in at over one watt are technically in a legal gray area. In fact, years ago, I think it was GetFPV that got fined and many manufacturers refused to import and sell video transmitters over one watt as if they were explicitly marketed for use on aircraft. In fact, one store started a whole separate website with ground vehicles on it, and they sold the 2-watt and 3-watt video transmitters on that website, but not their FPV-focused multi-rotor aircraft website. That issue is unlikely to matter to most customers who just want to buy something that gets the job done. And we have seen some U.S. stores importing this, so maybe they've decided that that issue is worth the risk or they figured out ways around it. The other big reason that we don't see more high-powered video transmitters is size, weight, and heat buildup. And size and weight, well, just the bigger your amplifier, the more power you're going to consume, the bigger it's going to be. And so there's a, there's a limit, but the limit is way higher than we really see. This 2.5 watt video transmitter comes in at only 12 grams. So clearly there's a lot of headroom in the size and weight budget to have higher powered video transmitters than we have typically seen. And you might think that power consumption is what matters. Yes, if you output more power, you will draw more power. So could that result in shorter battery life? And the answer is, Technically, yes, but practically speaking, your motors are drawing so much more power than your video transmitter that even if you double or triple the, uh, the uh, power draw of your video transmitter, you're not going to notice it's, it's seconds of flight time difference. It's just not that big a deal unless you're flying very, very small quadcopters like little tiny whoops with 300 milliamp hour batteries. No, the real limitation in the output power of an analog video transmitter is heat buildup and heat dissipation. The more amplification you're doing inside the video transmitter, the hotter it's going to run, and then eventually it will damage itself. They usually have built-in temperature protection circuits that shut down the amplifier when they overheat, but then you see, if, you, if you're trying to output 2.5 watts, but then as soon as you do, you overheat and you shut down, you're not really outputting 2.5 watts. So the big question with this video transmitter is, has Foxeer designed it in a way that it can output 2.5 watts consistently without overheating and shutting down? And if so, is it worth the size, weight, and price to put it on your build? On the back side of the Reaper, we can see it's got a fairly standard feature set for a video transmitter. The input is between 7 and 36 volts, so certainly up to 6S and even a little bit more than 6S if you want to. There is Tramp telemetry control, so you can do video transmitter control, not with smart audio, but with tramp telemetry. It doesn't matter, really no difference there. Uh, it's got a five volt regulator for powering your camera if you were to use it in an aircraft without a separate five volt regulator, like without a flight controller. And uh, then there's the video output and the ground. There is a single button 
So to manipulate the band channel and power, you are going to be sort of doing some uh, hinky button presses here, long press, short press to decide which you're changing, as opposed to something like the Rush Tank Solo here, which has a separate frequency and power button, makes it just a little bit easier to manipulate. But frankly, in a modern in a modern build, you're probably going to be using Smart Audio. You're going to use the flight controller or something to control. You're not going to be pushing the button, most likely. Now, as you're thinking about the price of this VTX, we have to acknowledge that it comes with the VTX and it comes with some wires. It does not come with any antenna or even a pigtail cable. You will need to provide that for yourself. If you've got one of those lying around from a previous build, then that's fine. But if you're going to need to buy one separately, that's going to increase the cost of your uh, of your build. Uh, most people are probably not going to use a pigtail. They're just going to buy an antenna with an MMCX connector directly connected and plug it straight in. And you'd have to buy that antenna for your new build anyway, so maybe that's not really a big deal for you. Before we can test the output power of this video transmitter, we're going to have to unlock it. It ships in a locked mode that doesn't give access to the full output power or all of the channels. And there's some regulatory reason why manufacturers feel like they have to do this, but I'm always a little confused because like, for example, the little frequency card that they include says that any output power over 25 milliwatts requires a ham license to operate legally. That is not true. All power levels in the United States for this video transmitter require a ham license. 25 mil there is no 25 milliwatt exemption in the United States. This video transmitter is not part 15 certified. Therefore, you need a ham license to operate it. In Europe, there is a 25 milliwatt exemption that everyone ignores, but okay. But they specifically said ham license, and that's a USA thing. So it's kind of nonsense. They ship it locked, and they act like there's this, oh, if you have a ham license, you can unlock it, wink, wink. But you're supposed to have a ham license whether it's locked or unlocked. So it's, I don't know. They keep doing it, though, so maybe there's a reason I'm not aware of. To unlock the video transmitter, I'm going to hold down this button until the red LED power is blinking. It's gone off. It's on. Now it's blinking. When it is on again, release the button. It's on again. I'm going to release the button. Okay. And then it says... Blinking red LED is unlocked. Constant red LED is locked. So we want to see it. It's going to blink this sequence, which indicates which channel it's on. And then we want to see a blinking red LED. The next thing we're going to do is measure the output power of this video transmitter to see if it makes its rated 2.5 watts. But before we do that, I want to take a second to remind you that I have a Patreon website. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you and you can cancel any time. Patrons get access to my Discord server where you can chat with other patrons, get help and just talk about FPV, and they get access to podcast uploads of my uh, live streams if you want to listen to them instead of watch them live. Uh, but mostly what you get by joining the Discord is the awesome feeling of supporting the work that I'm doing here. And if you hear that and you go, what are you talking about? It's just not your time yet. That's cool. If today's the day you feel like you've I've earned it, there's a link down below. If I haven't earned it yet, I'll keep making content. I hope you'll keep watching the content and uh, maybe that day will come. Now it's time to measure the output power and the heat dissipation of this video transmitter. We're going to be measuring the output power using the Immersion RC RF power meter. Don't uh, let the fact that it's got a Rotoriot logo on it fool you. Uh, they did a collab way back when. This is made by Immersion RC, the same company that makes the Ghost Control Link and the Tramp video transmitter. And uh, we've got this flare camera here to measure the uh, temperature. And you can see the max temperature it's reading right here. Sorry, it's upside down. That was just the best way to get it in frame. 34.5 degrees Celsius. And you can see the center reading right here. And with 25 milliwatts on race band one, we're seeing about 35 milliwatts of output power. Well, here we are about 10 minutes later. The video transmitter has stabilized at a pretty solid 26 milliwatts. Maybe that's why it was originally at around 30, because they knew it would heat up and come down. Uh, that's, a, that's pretty solid. And the temperature is uh, holding around 70 degrees Celsius. Completely respectable result. Let's move it up to race band 8 and see if changing the channel changes the output power. Sometimes that happens with video transmitters, although it really shouldn't happen at 25 milliwatts. Bam. 
dead on, 25 milliwatts. Fantastic. Uh, now, let's crank it all the way up to the maximum and see what happens. Now we've brought it back down to ambient temperature with this fan, and we are going to become familiar with this fan again because we're going to try it at max output power, and we're going to do that with cooling. There's no question that a video transmitter like this needs active cooling in order to run at maximum output power. Want a quadcopter, that's going to happen because it's just getting air from the props and from air blowing around it. Uh, that's just to be expected. Here we go. Three, two, one. Powered up. Let's turn the fan up to max. Looks like we're getting about 1.8 watts. That's on race band 8. We're getting 1 watt, 1.7 watts. That's that's a lot less than 2.5 watts. About 10 minutes later, we're holding at about 75 degrees Celsius, and the output power is stabilized at about 1.5 watt. And if we turn off the fan, let's see how long it takes to just shut down completely. Well, that's weird. It still shows we're outputting 1 watt, but we are not getting any video signal anymore. So the lights are all blinking, and the VTX still thinks it's working, but it is definitely toast. Uh, so that was another five-ish minutes. Let's give it some air and see if it comes back. Yes, immediately. Okay, so uh, there you go. That's what you can expect out of it. At the beginning of this video, I said that the Immersion RC RF power meter is not a lab-grade piece of equipment, and the measurements might be a little bit off. But this is pretty far off, farther off than I think the Immersion RC meter should be. But just to cross-check the measurements, I bought another brand new Immersion RC RF power meter and it read about the same as the first one. I tried a different MMCX cable in case the cable was messed up. I tried different connectors and I cross-checked it against a Rush Tank Solo VTX which measured about what it was supposed to measure. Uh, so it sure seems to me like this uh, video transmitter is not making the 2.5 watts that it says it will on the label. However, there are other YouTubers out there, including Gal Kremer and Wesley Vardy, who have measured it at 2.5 watts. I don't know if they just got lucky and got a unit that was a little overpowered, or I got unlucky and got a unit that's a little underpowered, or maybe the fact that I bought mine anonymously and they perhaps were sent theirs by Foxeer. I don't know, but the results are what they are. Should you buy the Foxeer Reaper 2.5 watt analog VTX? In order to answer that question, let's compare it to the Rush Tank Solo and the TBS Unify Pro 32 HV. Both of them are, I think, like two of the leading contenders for a high-powered analog video transmitter. Both the Rush Tank Solo and the TBS Unify Pro 32 HV advertise themselves as having one watt plus of output power. Both of them have been tested to output as much as 1.6 watts, depending on various conditions. Both of them are about $10 cheaper than the Foxeer. They come in around 50 bucks. The Foxeer is around 60 bucks. And bear in mind, the Foxeer does not include any MMCX pigtail or anything like that, which may change the cost equation a little further against it. Both the TBS Unify and the Rush Tank Solo have a microphone built in. So if you fly with audio, that's going to steer them your direction direction, uh, whereas the Foxeer doesn't, if it has a microphone, there doesn't seem to be any reference to it or indication of it on the outside. So there you go. The real question with the Foxeer is, does it make its rated output power? Because if it makes 2.5 watts, then that extra 10 bucks is totally worth it. But if it only makes around 1.5 or 1.6 watts, maybe it's not. And mine didn't make 2.5 watts. Nevertheless, it did make more than both of the Rush Tank Solos that I tested, which capped out around 1 to 1.2 watts. And the difference between 1 watt and 2.5 watts is about a 50% increase in range. So if you do get a good one, it's going to give you a lot more range. But um, I'm not sure I feel super strongly if I had bought if I had bought this and I was expecting 2.5 watts and I only got 1.6 watts, I might not feel so great about that. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, if you're interested in picking up one of these video transmitters, there are links down in the video description below. It sure helps out the channel if you click those links. Uh, in addition, if you want to know more about how to use this Immersion RC RF power meter, because, like, how would you even know? 
If you bought this video transmitter, you, how would you know if you were getting 1.5 watts or 2.5 watts? <laughs> That's why this damn thing is so freaking useful. It's been out of stock forever, but they just did a new run of it, and you can actually get one today. If you think this might be worth 100 bucks, I'll put a card on screen with a video going through the features of this and how to use it, and uh, you can see if you uh, think it's something you want to pick up. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.